morning, Ryan. Thanks for joining us. Nick Barris here along with Metro Councilman Bob Mendez. We really appreciate him taking some time out of his morning to join us here to talk about some issues very important to the city of Nashville, the proposed budget increase. Wanted to ask you this, though, um, just with regard to you were just talking about the mayor's plan, you know, uh, sending a little more money to public safety agencies, what, uh, about $2.6 million more. A lot of people saying, you know, hey, look, they don't need more of that money. It needs to be spent on public services. And a lot of the phrases we hear, not just to, in Nashville, but elsewhere, especially in Minneapolis, is the idea of defunding a police department. I, I wonder if, if you put much thought into that yourself, uh, as you've heard that, and you're someone yourself who at one point uh, had called for the, uh, the police chief to, to step down and resign. What are your thoughts on that? Um, so let me start with the police chief. Um, I've, been, I've been calling for him to resign for a couple years now um, uh, after um, his uh, really, frankly, poor response to the last two police shootings in Nashville. Um, I, I lost faith with him. Um, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Um, of, of all the department heads in, in Metro, um, he's the, uh, sing, in my opinion, the single most disrespectful department head to the public and to others in government um, and acts like he's, um, he's the boss, um, not, uh, not civilian leadership. And I've had a problem with that for several years. Um, that's, that's about him. That's not about the police department. Um, separately, about um, the defunding the police department talk, you know, that's, uh, I have paid a lot of attention to that over the last few weeks when it's been discussed. And it seems to mean different things to different people. Um, you know, at, at, at the um, far end, um, there's, uh, you know, I, I think it, it, it means some people to, um, to take apart police departments and start over again. Um, uh, with, with other people, it means trying to move some social services um, that happen um, maybe through the police department out of police department, for example, I understand that Eugene, Oregon, for 30 years now has had, um, uh, when there's a call that involves uh, drug addiction, um, they try to not have police officers respond, but they have social workers respond and try to guide people um, uh, through a system other than the criminal justice system. And, and then I, I think um, what I've heard most frequently here in Nashville is, um, is, is really just the sentiment that um, if we're going to have a um, uh, what the mayor called a continuity of services budget, then um, we, we should have everybody have uh, stay flat, not a little bit more to criminal justice and a little bit less to schools and nonprofits and arts and summer youth employment. And uh, um, so e even before um, the public uh, hearing last week, my substitute was going to put more money towards schools, nonprofits, arts. Um, and uh, summer youth employment programs, um, and uh, so that it's uh, it's it's hard to tell exactly. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing to everybody. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I imagine much of the country will be watching closely what happens in Minneapolis as they really seem to be moving forward with that. In your mind, I don't know, we talked a bit about this before the show. The idea maybe then would be if you defund the police department to spend more of the money, perhaps as you said, like they do in Eugene, Oregon, uh, to, to respond to different calls with maybe more social service workers as opposed to it. But at the same time, doesn't there also have to be a balance? You're going to need some law enforcement, armed law enforcement, to respond to things like bank robbery robberies or murders and things like that. I mean, I, I just haven't seen it clearly articulated yet what form it will take, but you just don't get rid of a police department because you need people to respond to some of these more serious criminal offenses. Uh, sure, I, and, and I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, uh, you know, the, if you look at uh, cr crime statistics, um, you, you know, there is going to be crime and it has to be dealt with. Um, you know, the the question is a balance of resources. You know, how much are you putting into front end solutions that maybe help you avoid um, having crime in the first place versus back end solutions um, where you have to deal with uh, uh, violence after it's already taken place. Let's take a call for you from Ann. Ann, good morning. Do you have a question for the councilman? Yes. Um, last Tuesday, I left the safe confine of my front yard where I have mostly stayed for the last three months. And I stood on the courthouse steps with a four foot sign that read, remove Chief Anderson. And I stood there the entire time the prayer vigil was going on. 
And what I left with when I left the courthouse steps were the thoughts of three police officers who thanked me for standing there with that four foot sign hmm. because they had no faith in their chief of police and they thanked me for the words that were on the signs of my sign and the 20 plus first time protesters who were all women who stood with me and had never before been to a protest. But we all felt the need to be there that night. So our words would not be missed and would be heard. This is the time that everyone needs to be reflecting. Our chief of police has a low morale within his department because of who he is. We are missing 180 officers, not because of the budget, but because of the morale of his officers. When 25 women between the ages of 25 and 70 can stand on the courthouse steps with signs that read, remove Anderson, and police officers thank them for holding those signs. The problem is not the officers. It is the person that is running the department. Do you want to respond, Bob? Uh, preach. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I hear I hear a lot of that. I've heard a lot of that for a while. Um, I, I think the rank and file police officer um, in Metro um, uh, Police Department has for some number of years felt exactly the way the caller described and um, so he's, he's unpopular with his own officers. He's unpopular in minority communities. He's um, uh, unpopular with a lot of downtown business owners. Um, I have not understood um, now uh, three mayors running because um, uh, the mayor's the only person with power to do anything about it. Council mm -hmm. has zero power um, on that. Uh, it's only the mayor. Um, I've, I've, uh, I just haven't understood um, how he keeps his job. Yeah, I, I was wondering, and I'm glad you kind of clarified that. I mean, aside from the chief on his own maybe deciding to step down, the, uh, the power, and let's remind folks, unlike the sheriff, he is not elected. He serves, doesn't he, at the behest of the, uh, the mayor. The mayor has the power to fire him. Yeah, and that's written into the Metro Charter. Um, you would need a referendum to, to change that. It is at the, at the discretion of the mayor. Okay, let's take a call from Lauren and see if she has a follow-up there. Lauren, good morning. Do you have a question for the councilman? Yes, good morning. Um, I got a couple uh, to be exact. One is, um, why does the um, mayor's office don't have to lay off or um, furlough anybody when other people in the United States, the big cities, have been? Every time he's asked, he says, no, you can furlough people, you can lay off people to help the budget. And then the um, um, pension plan, you could do away completely. Why do we have to pay pension plan when he doesn't want to lay, lay off anybody? You can, and then you can um, get your own retirement plan going. Mm -hmm. The people of Nash, the people of Nashville, do not have to pay your retirement plan if you don't want to lay off people to begin with. Huh. Number two yeah. is, number two is why when um, you let big place, big businesses come in to build, um, do they get taxed? And if they do, and, and do they get a discount? And if they do, why? Okay. A common question there. No, I can I can uh, address both of those. First of all, for the for the layoffs um, and furloughs, I would go back to where we started, um, which is we came into this downturn with the worst in America um, savings. 
And as Nick, you and I have talked about on this program for uh, a couple years running now, um, the way Metro has uh, managed to get to this worst in America savings is through multiple years in a row of holding um, back hiring. And so every department, every department has unfilled positions. And so unlike um, uh, other big cities that were um, living high on the hog during good times, we've been squeezing um, uh, constituents on services and employees on pay for at least three years now. And so, um, uh, whereas other cities um, can uh, trim back that fat they building up during good times, Metro's been trimming back fat for a couple of years. And, and there, there's, there's not a way to save a material amount of money without cutting into important government services that people wouldn't want to do without, um, like garbage pickup, uh, sure. libraries, et cetera. And the second one on the, um, the pension, um, I've been I've been in office four and a half years, and for four and a half years, I've been a voice for wanting to reform um, the way we do that. Um, but for the current budget year, um, that doesn't really do anything. Um, you know, the fixing the pension, fixing the post the the retirement health benefits, that's a a, a 20 year. Uh, I mean, you start fixing something now, you reap the benefits 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Um, you, 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 Right now, we've got all the costs for everybody who's are already retired and we're committed to that. Um, the, the only thing that you can change is what happens uh, 20 years down the road. One last question before we uh, let you go, and, and you made reference to this before as to one reason you know you'd like to see the, the chief leave is his response to some recent police shootings here in the city. And as you well know, against this climate right now with what's happening with George Floyd and what happened to him, we have a trial which, barring the pandemic, would have likely started this month, which may happen later this fall. But of course, we're talking about uh, former Metro officer Andrew Delkey charged with murder and the, the shooting death of uh, Daniel Hambrick. And, and that's sitting out out there waiting and that is going to be a very high profile closely watched case again in this one there is video of it okay and it's going to go to a, a, a judge and jury just your thoughts with that hanging out there with regard to what's happening right now and how when that trial happens much of the country will be watching Nashville too and I wonder if you think things have changed with the way that trial is going to be handled just from your perspective now with what's happened of course with George Floyd well, um, since, since the, um, that shooting, um, it was August of 2018, um, the city has moved forward with um, uh, having a community oversight board that's still brand new. Um, uh, I'm hopeful that we have a full implementation of body cameras um, uh, shortly, um, hopeful about that. Um, but, but the reality is the, um, I mean, I, I, it'll be up to the jury to figure out what to do, but there's no question that the video shows an officer assuming a shooter's stance and uh, shooting somebody in the back of the neck and killing them. Um, and, uh, um, and, and I'm sure the lawyers will make the arguments either way, but that's what it shows. Um, and uh, it's, uh, um, I, I hope that uh, Nashville doubles down uh, moving forward with uh, um, community-minded uh, reforms um, as rapidly as possible. Gotcha. Councilman Mendez, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your moment morning, and uh, maybe we'll talk to you again down the line. All right, sir? Appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. Very good conversation. Really appreciate that. Listen, we'll take a break. When we come back, John Harris with the Tennessee Firearms Association. We're going to be shifting gears a bit, and we're going to be talking about uh, personal protection, you carrying a weapon, and, and take it to, to a level of uh, what might have happened had some guns and some looting uh, come into play at the same time as we saw a couple of Saturdays ago, and what the laws are and the rights are for merchants, homeowners, and others. Um, we'll get his take on that and take some of your questions right after this. Stay with us.